Got another light in for testing. This is the Nightcore P18 and this was sent in via the company for a test and review. Quite an unusual design on this light. Just run through the specs. You'll notice that the candela is lower on this so we're expecting more of a spread out light beam on it. But it has a couple of nice features including the voltage readout which we've seen on previous night cores. You've also got that body shape which we'll have a closer look at in a second. And onto the body, it's quite a short body although it is thicker due to the styling and design in a thick pattern on the body and that gives it quite a decent grip and you've got that clip on the back so you can attach it to a belt and that's quite a strong clip as well. You can unscrew it and remove it if you want to. Two switches on this light and the main one is on the back near the base and this is a two stage switch and it's completely silent. The only thing that I'd say about it is the pressure's quite strong so it shouldn't accidentally activate but I would have liked to have had some indication when you're on the halfway mark. So you have a half and a full press on that switch. It just takes a bit of getting used to. I'll unscrew the base cap now so you can see the gold plated contact there also has a spring underneath and inside the light that has a spring on it as well. So this is really designed for unprotected cells in terms of the batteries that you can fit into this. And it does feel very nicely made because it's a die cast solid body and that should also help with the heat distribution. I'll just put an unprotected cell that came with the light into the torch. When you put a battery into the light and you start to screw it up you'll see the flashing indicator which gives you the voltage. There's your side switch so you can long press that and then you'll get the flashing readout for the voltage from that as well. Because you need to use high drain batteries, unfortunately some of them, particularly this Olight one that I have, is a bit too long. You can just barely fit it in but not quite tighten up the cap, so that could be an issue. Perhaps a few extra millimetres would have helped. The included holster that you get with this is very much up to the Nightcore standards. They've doubled over on the nylon. You've got the Velcro on the back and it's quite a slim compact holster. It's basically the same one that you get with the Concept one and the EC30. The model numbers on the back there you can see it's sewn in. A few different choices on how you put this into the holster. I personally prefer with the clip on the side. That way you've got the full velcro that you can push down. It does fit with the clip at the front because the velcro is long enough and wide enough to give it enough grip. The Nightcore holsters are pretty decent. I've always been fairly happy with them. User manual and warranty guide I will show you later on. There's the wrist strap, standard Nightcore and a spare o-ring. If you do want to attach the strap, you're going to have to put it through the clip because there's nowhere else on the body for it to go. Not a big problem for me. I do quite like the clip. It is pretty strong. If you were clipping it to, say, a baseball cap, it might be a bit on the tight side, but I prefer it to be stronger than weaker. Here's your LED Cree XHP 35 HD, quite a common one that we've seen in quite a few different lights that I've looked at. Going through the user interface now, a full press gives you the on or off, and you do have a mode memory. This light also remembers if you set it to the strobe so you can go straight to that. Once the light's on, just half press on the main switch and you can cycle through the power levels. As I said, it does take a bit of getting used to with that, that you don't fully engage it. For your momentary turbo, when it's on, half press and when it's off, full press and hold and that jumps straight to the turbo after the last setting that you had. To get to the lowest output, the moonlight, just push both buttons in. You don't need to hold them in. You can just let them go and that takes you straight to your moonlight. To get to the strobe modes when it's on a full press and then hold it in for about a second or so and then it will start to cycle through the three different strobe modes which are included. Not everyone's going to use all of those but it's nice to have a choice. You do have the beacon in there and the SOS as well as the normal strobe. For the additional LED that you have, the red one, just push it in for a couple of seconds and that will turn it on. Short press to turn it off. It's also possible to have the main LED light on as well as the red LED. Not sure how useful that is going to be, but that's the way they've designed it. And lastly, if you want to get to the battery voltage, long press in the side switch for about four seconds, and then that will flash out the battery voltage for you. Quite a bit to learn there on the user interface, but you do get used to it. It is a bit shorter than the EC30, although the body is thicker in girth. Water resistance, this is IP56 rated, so not submersible but it can survive water, jets or pressure. I don't know if that's going to be an issue for you. It wouldn't be for me, but it is something which should be noted. We'll start off with the beam shots outside. We're at the mid-level. 
260 lumens then I'll kick it up to the high point at 850 and then up to the turbo at 1800 you get a couple of minutes on this temperature depending and then it will start to drop down quite a wide beam pattern on this particularly if I compare it to the Nightcore EC30 which is up next that has a slightly different tint and a bit more of a hot spot in the middle that would explain why it has the higher candela and higher range it does get warm in operation but that die cast body does distribute the heat quite evenly I'll run through a few more beam shots now and come back at the end with a conclusion <laughs> of thoughts with the Nightcore P18. I think this is quite an interesting light for a couple of reasons. They've done something a bit different with the body and styling. For the most part I think it does work particularly with the super compact size and the silent switches. I also think some people are going to find that red LED useful and the UI does cover almost everything you could want in a light. A couple of downsides though you can't use a lot of protected cells because it's not quite long enough inside. The UI does take a bit getting used to. I would prefer if you could have a bit of feel on the halfway position on the switch, but you can get used to it over time. I'm sure Nightcore didn't design it as the ultimate burglar light, but it certainly could be something which would work very well for that activity. Jokes aside, I think the silent switch is quite nice, and I do quite like the light overall. Just a few places I would have tweaked the design. If you've got any thoughts on this light, do leave a comment below. Perhaps you've tried one or used one, and thanks for watching the video.